I came into my office this morning and found a document left on my desk. The only thing written on this document was a name. Michael Harris II. I don't know what this means and frankly, I'm terrified. I fear I'm being stalked and I'm losing my grip on reality as this isn't the first time I've found strange notes and pieces of paper left on my desk in this fashion. It doesn't really help that this scary thought is exacerbated by the fact that I'm drunk at 9am and we don't even have an office. But we do have a video on Michael Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stark Raving Sports. My name is SRS Fico, and as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It would be very epic. Also buy our hats, okay bye. Let's start this video off by talking about Mike on the field. Drifts back and looks up Michael, Michael Harris, Harris II the is an emerging superstar. He's a center fielder for the Atlanta Braves, living out his childhood dream every day he steps on the field. An A-Town boy who gets to be a premier player on his local team. And that's just one reason why you can root for this guy. Michael Harris is fun. He's already really good, and he's really just the type of guy you can get behind and support. A 22-year-old already living out his dream. Let's get into it. You know LSU baseball? The number one team in the country at a school where both Livy Dunn and Jamarcus Russell can claim his home? They wanted Harris just as a pitcher. He's a center fielder and only a center fielder in the majors, and a really good one at that. If a school like LSU wants you as a pitcher too, Shoot. He committed to play college baseball at Texas Tech coming out of high school because he was going to be a two-way player and also because he really liked their vet program. Harris was quoted saying, I feel like they're literally humans when he was explaining his love for animals. Even back when he was considering LSU, he and one of his close friends were imagining life studying at LSU's vet school. This is clearly something that's been on his mind for his whole life and very likely something he'll consider pursuing once his baseball career ends. But he never went to Texas Tech for one reason. He was too good. His hometown Braves drafted him in the third round of the 2019 MLB draft, and less than three years later, he was already manning center field for them. He was promoted up from AA, two levels short of the majors. It was so unexpected for him and his family that when he told his parents he got promoted to the big leagues, they almost didn't believe him. What they definitely wouldn't believe is how good he was so soon. Harris essentially revitalized a Braves team that had been struggling out of the gates. They had a 22-24 and 24 record, and when they promoted Harris, on May 28th, they went 79 and 37 the rest of the way. And that's because his skill set is just so deep. He finished in the top 5% of MLB players for sprint speed, he finished in the top 5% for arm strength, and he finished in the top 8% of outs above average, baseball savant's top stat for defense. And on top of all of this, he also raked at the plate. A 297 batting average, 19 home runs, a 514 slugging percentage, and a 135 OPS plus. OPS plus, for those of you who don't know, is basically basically a number that compares a hitter to the greater environment around them where 100 is always average. So Money Mike was 35% above the average compared to the rest of the league and he's just 21 years old. Mans could barely buy a beer and he's already crushing balls harder than a frat boy crushing white claws. Probably. All his expected hitting stats and quality of contact stuff on Baseball Savant are above average too, so bam. It should go without saying, but hitting balls hard, being fast, and playing great defense makes for possibly the most fun play style in baseball. Michael Harris just plays a fun kind of baseball to watch, so get in while you can. Really the only hole in his game is something that basically every rookie struggles with, pitch selection. He's in the blue on Baseball Savant for swing and misses and taking his walks, which is not good. But again, that's something pretty much every rookie struggles with due to lack of experience. I mean, he only has 414 MLB at bats so far, which honestly, that makes his success so much crazier. The lack of time to get acclimated since coming up from two levels short of the big leagues and still dominating. I mean, all things considered, he's still got so little time under his belt that he doesn't even have enough big league experience for baseball reference to list any comparable players. Although, I'm sure when that time comes, his comps are going to be some pretty good players. Here's one more stat for you. Wins above replacement, or war. It basically estimates how many more games a team would win with one particular player over what is considered a replacement level player at that same position. Harris accrued 5.3 baseball reference war in just 114 games last season, with totals above one in both offense and defense too, which usually is a signal of a good all-around player. Player. That's a really good pace and really ahead of the game for a young player. Just to show how good that pace was, if he played in all 162 games for the Braves last year with his war per game, he would have been the fourth best player in the National League. But if you asked him how his rookie season went, he'd just say it was decent. In all right season, he guesses. Harris was rewarded for his efforts tremendously. He won the NL Rookie of the Year award, finished top 15 in NL MVP voting, MLB Network put him as a top five center fielder for this year, and man, 
he got paid. Eight years, $72 million. And this was given to him before his rookie season even ended. Money Mike, baby. One guy even made it sound like they were negotiating with him while he was literally on the field in a game. But as we've touched on through this entire video, his play is not the only reason why you should love Michael Harris. It definitely helps, but I mean, he's still just a normal guy off the field. Just a goofy young lad. Let's talk a bit more about his off the field antics. Also, shout out to No More Fielders for helping me with the research for this part. You should go check out his channel. It's pretty dope. Now, bear in mind, this guy just turned 22, so he gets a little goofy XD at times. Like in this interview, for example, where he keeps meowing in between sentences, because <laughs> why not? I mean, it was, a, it was an unmatched moment, meow. Um... Looks like Baseball Bailey might have a new second channel video idea. I mean, hey, say what you want, but he's having fun doing what he does. And speaking of which, as is the case with most baseball players, he has other hobbies he enjoys doing outside of his baseball career. Because, you know, he's a person. <laughs> One of the things he seems to really like doing is golf. A little interesting fact about this is that he golfs right-handed even though he bats left-handed. I mean, I shoot a left-handed bow and I do everything else with my right hand, so I'm basically like the exact same as Mike and I'm just as cool and stuff, so yeah. The Braves' first baseman, Matt Olson, has an interesting story about a time when he played golf with Michael. He claims that Kirby Yates, who was hurt at the time, was just chilling in his golf cart on the fairway about 390 yards in front of where Harris was teeing off. He says that Yates told him, I'm like, he can't hit it here. And next thing he knows, he sees a ball roll 10 yards past him. Now, of course, this is all just a hearsay story that was told, but if that's true, that's impressive. <laughs> just to put this into perspective, 70% of average golfers have an average driving distance of under 273 yards. How is someone allowed to just be good at, like, everything? Like, it's just not fair. And he likes even more sports than just baseball and golf, such as basketball and bowling. His bowling and basketball skills aren't as impressive compared to his golf and, of course, baseball skills, but they're still pretty impressive. He does say that in his best game of bowling, he rolled a 260, which is pretty good. And I mean, it's not like he's high school gym class level of shooting hoops either. He actively practices all of these sports while also having a full-blown career in the MLB. Like, how? Here's another fun little story sprinkled in. I can't tell if he's a comedy legend or just awkward and humble here, but apparently his reaction to getting signed to the Braves for an eight-year, $72 million contract was just sitting quietly at his locker and struggling to get an athletic sock on. Humble and hilarious. We usually try to end these videos off with some sort of uplifting message. And honestly, what can be more uplifting than this guy? A guy whose dream was always to go to the majors and play for his hometown team that he'd watched pretty much his entire life. Getting signed to that very team he strived for his entire life pretty much out of high school. A 22-year-old already living out his dream who was still humble enough to mess around and just have a good time while also having the skills to get the job done. Like, what a legend. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate every single one of you, especially the ones who made it all the way to the end. And speaking of which, if you made it all the way to the end, type Money Mike in the comments so I can see who stuck it out with me all the way to the end. Anyways, have a lovely day gamers. Peace.